Hello everybody, welcome to this week's indie game. Today we're going to be playing Concrete and Steel. This is the tutorial level, uh, but I'm also going to show you some of the stuff I was able to do over the course of maybe an hour or two. So, uh, this is a building sandbox creative style game uh, made by Matterhorn Software. This is their first publication on Steam, uh, and it is in early access as of May 27th, 2016. So, uh, yeah, if you want to pick it up, you can get it for around uh, $12 US dollars uh, during its launch sale, and later on you'll be able to get it for, I think it was $14. Um, so this here is like icon tutorials, they're using icons to show everything, and they're a little confusing, which is why I wanted to show it. And I think the whole reason they're doing that is so that they don't have to put English text here, so that people in other languages can still get the point. But this is like, hey, information about the game here. There are no winners. You don't have to do things fast. Just build and be creative. Okay. That's what I think it means. Um, we're going to do these out of order because I don't know why they did them like this, but that's okay. We're going to do clicking first places stuff. That's important. And actually, what happened there is I actually placed it on the wall. See? You can place stuff on stuff. Right clicking rotates it. So if we make a little uh, wall here, and we can rotate things around the, you rotate it around the red crosshair there, the, the little origin point. There we go, modern art, my friends, modern art. Um, as, as you saw me before, uh, pushing Q it, it deletes things. And then lastly, there's the scroll wheel, which is um, hard to explain. So it's not hard to explain, they just kind of did it poorly. So if you look in the upper left-hand corner right now, we're using the build tool. We have uh, the wall category selected and where the I object we're using is one meter by one meter walls. If we uh, scroll wheel, it looks like you're making them bigger and smaller, but you're actually just changing what object you're using. So if we go into this next room, it instructs us to press C. If we do that, then we get a little menu of different objects to place and actually, if you hold C and scroll, you can actually uh, uh, get to a different category. So let's go to like kitchen, okay? And now if we release C and just use our scroll wheel, you can see that you're cycling between different things in the kitchen category. And the reason why that was confusing for the walls is because all the ones in the wall categories are just different sized walls. So it looked like you were changing the size of it, but you're not. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for for this section of the tutorial. Uh, if we go into this next room, it tells us to press tab to change tools. Uh, if you press tab for the first time, you actually get the pencil, which is the freeform tool. This is um, uh, a new new addition to the early access. It was in the first update to the game. So if you scroll and drag, if you click and drag, you're gonna get a meter high slab of concrete, however far you dragged. While you're dragging, if you uh, scroll the wheel, you can actually change the height of the block, and uh, that's pretty cool. So that's a nice tool for using to build things. Okay, uh, but if we get to the spray canister that they have here, you can get the spray canister that has a brick texture on it. If you click on the table, it'll actually make the table turn to brick. Um, if you press C again, you can get different categories this time based on um, you know, which, uh, based on what kind of thing you want it to look like. And I, you see a preview of what that will look like on the, uh, the canister itself, which is really cool. I really like that a lot. Okay. So, um, yeah, if it's two things you should be aware of, um, when you're building, let's go to the freeform mode. Um, it's a little hard to use this grid on the floor because, um, you know, you kind of just have to count out the things. The grid moves with your cursor. So as you're counting out your steps, the cursor kind of moves and it's really hard to say, if I want to make this five meters long, it's really hard to like drag it out and get a good idea that you're five meters exactly. Um, so one thing you can do to remedy that is put down a giant slab like we have here and then get the paint canister out and go to the handy category and change it to blueprint, or you can also change the blue blueprint, blue 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 blue, blue. just blueprint. <laughs> There's blueprint or blueprint orange. I was gonna say blue blueprint, which is weird. Um, and what that gives you is you can actually like start in one of these meter by meter things and just go down here and just count one, two, three, four, five. So it's actually 
a really nice texture to use for counting stuff out. Okay, um, another thing to notice is that in metal there's like chrome and also I think polished steel, I wanna say, that have reflective properties. Um, it doesn't update too quickly and it's not that high resolution, but it's still really cool that it does it and that it's there at all. So I really like that, um, that's, that's awesome. Okay, next thing is a challenge to build a bridge and get across. Now I will note that you can go to, if you go back to the, the wrench, and you can go to prefab section, which um, is like sort of miscellaneous, I think. It's just sort of a miscellaneous section for different modeled stuff that isn't just generic stuff, but yeah. So you can build, so you'll notice that um, if I like get the bridge object, and I put it on the floor here and right click, it like swings around, but it never lays flat. So it's like, you don't really know how to get there. You have to go down to the wall and, and build a bridge like this. Um, I think that's the intention here. Uh, you could also just get a really long beam or a really long section of wall or floor and put it sideways and, and do that. That's totally an option as well. Um, matter of fact, I'm kind of curious, can you do? I do this and I rotate it and just do that yeah you can just do that if you just wanted to do this quickly and not actually use the bridge they wanted you to use uh, one thing I want to note before moving on is if you get the wrench tool and you go to the handy category there you get a couple of different cool things so um, Let's do the, let's do these later. Okay, um, so in the room, you can press E on the light and you can change the lights to on, or on, which they actually are on default. If you turn them off, you can press interact and they turn off. Um, it would be nice to have a way to do that without having to pull up this drop down menu. As far as I know, there isn't one though. Uh, and then also you can open this door and you can open it by pulling it or pushing it. Um, whichever one makes more sense for the room you're building. And you win, you've finished the tutorial, press escape, go to Google Maps and eat a sandwich with three pieces of bread at the bottom. Now, I'm going to go ahead and change to flat grass and I'm going to load the game that I was most recently playing. Is this it? I don't think so. Maybe it's this. Yeah, it's this. Okay, so this is the flat grass room. I've built some stuff. I built a circular track here. Um, that I think on the Steam page there was some mention about actually adding trains that can bring you from place to place in a giant world like this. Um, but one thing that is, I, I can't figure out how to do that if that is already here. One thing that is already here though is uh, this elevator system. So if you, um, grab this. If you press X, you can actually copy the, what the thing that you're looking at. So I can get copy the stairs here. Uh, press X and copy stairs. Right. Press X here and get this elevator. So if you get the if you get the thing inside the the transit category called an elevator stop, which is kind of like a doorway, and then the elevator, and you line them up just so, um, you can actually I actually I've had this not work when I put a second elevator in the scene, um, or maybe it was because it was facing the wrong way or something, but um, basically here's one that's already set up, and I can go in here and do first floor. And little elevator music plays in a ding and you wind up at the second floor. You can also call it from down here. So it comes down to you, which is cool. I imagine, um, you know, on multiplayer, I didn't get to try this feature out to see if there was a way I could like keep my friends from getting up the elevator by constantly calling it away from them. I don't know. But I did play multiplayer to test out some other stuff. Um, you need to you set a password. Anyone anyone can join and look at what you're building, but you have to set a password to actually modify anything, which is kind of cool. Um, and then um, also, oh by the way, I didn't put this here. This was this was all this was here. I don't think I can get rid of it either. This is like the spawn pad, so that you can't you can't place it so that people can't spawn in. I guess. Anyways. Um, if you if you put in the password to build though, some guy was kind enough to let me uh, to give me the password so that I could test it out on his server. It was the only server I could see. You got to port forward to set up the server too, by the way. Um, 
So, anyways, um, uh, yeah, so I tried the password, and, and you can just totally tear down anything anyone else made. I, I tried breaking some of his stuff, and you can, so, um, basically it's like just a total free-for-all building, um, and, until, uh, you know, total free-for-all of building until, um, unless they don't have the password set, and then they can't do anything. So, this is my new apartment's office room, um, and if I actually close that... Uh, we can get in the room. This I modeled this. It took me a while, but I, I modeled it. And uh, essentially, this is uh, an exact replica. It took me a while to do, but um, I figured out, oh, I'm missing a chunk of ceiling. Uh -huh. yeah, let's get the spray canister, pick it up, spray it. Nice. So uh, I can turn the lights on here if I want. Lights on, it's my computer, my computer, my desk, my chair, there's sort of some other little pieces of furniture that I couldn't think of a good thing to put in here. I couldn't think of like a good thing that's in the game. We'll talk about, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but you know, you see you got the carpet, this is a bathroom, that's a closet, which I haven't modeled yet, and some shelves that look similar to the shelves I have, but mine aren't as tall, and there's only one column of shelves, but whatever. Um, this lampshade, which I accidentally colored as wallpaper. Let's see if I can, if I go to the um, can tool, I can actually hit Q to pull off any, s huh. No way, is that just actually the color of, uh, yeah, that's just actually the texture, I guess. Um, is there a better thing to do? Maybe cloth? That kind of looks like the ground now. Uh, huh. Wallpaper? Yeah, we can put a cat on it. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Um, but I also used the wiring tools to wire up. Here, let's, let's do it. Let's wire up the button. So you can click the button, click the light. And you get this orange beam here, and now if you hit E on the button, you can actually turn it off from here, which is true, from true to life from my office, but also a very cool feature of the game. Now, uh, if you switch away from the, the, the screwdriver wiring, so I think that's actually a soldering thing, uh, pencil, isn't it? No, it's probably a screwdriver. I don't know, one of those. You don't see the beam anymore, so that's fine if you want to walk around with some other tools out. But I actually think that walking around with the pencil is the least dangerous thing to walk around with because you can, you can, the only thing you can click on to actually cause any damage is a button and then followed by an accidental click to anything else uh, that takes wiring. So like if I click on the wall, nothing happens. If I walk around with a spray canister, I might accidentally turn everything into a giant scared cat. Um, so th I think that's the reason why, if you open the door here, th they made these cable, uh, cable, what are they called? They're things you can place, and they are called cable tidies. And if you click on the button, you can go to the cable tidy, and then from the cable tidy to another cable tidy that's here on the floor, and then from that cable tidy, I gotta click on it again actually, to the lamp, so now there's a beam going from that cable tidy down there to the lamp, but since that's going through the floor, you don't see it. And now, I can walk around with the, uh, whoops, open up. I can walk around with the pencil, don't have to see the, uh, don't have to see the things, and I can still interact with the light. Here, let's get a view of both light on, ding. Cool, so that's pretty much everything in the game. I would love to model the rest of my apartment. I think that would be fun, and I would, uh, uh, yeah, I know that a lot of people probably think this isn't a game, but there's two things that make it a game, in my opinion, and this is the last thing we're gonna talk about, is the first thing is the ability to have, um, the ability to have, uh, 
player made games parkour totally a possibility here um hide and seek or something like that could totally be fun in a giant map competitions for building um you know, uh, I don't know, that kind of a thing. There's also, because it's early access, the possibility for the devs to add some stuff that actually make it interesting to um, to games, like um, maybe they add the ability to export these builds um, as a 3D model, I don't know. I, that would be crazy. Um, and then, but then, you know, maybe, then maybe the things you build in this game along with your friends, much like, um, much like a uh, tabletop simulator, you know, then you can sort of share them and put them into other game engines and actually make games from them, which would make this more of a tool than a game. But it would be a really cool feature to have. Um, uh, yeah, I also think that this would be fun on live streams if I if you put all your viewers in a, one thing and try to all build something funny. I mean, it would be there'd be some features that I'd request if if that were real. Um, one of the things that I would love to see if that happened was, oh, we're in a block oh. is uh, is like plots for something so you can assign people certain plots to build on and and then other people can't build on the other ones. Um, yeah, so there's be players can turn this into more of a game where you can win if you want. Um, it would also be cool to put like Easter egg hunts and hide things around a hide things around a map and then, you know, load the map, race to try to find them all, that kind of a thing. Um, another reason why this is a game is because like Minecraft is definitely a game, right? And there's there are some goals to do in Minecraft, right? Survive, get food, um, automate farms to get more resources. But at the end of the day, it's it's like so easy in the grand scheme of things that like after a while it mostly becomes about creativity right can you just get a faster farm for the sake of getting a faster farm can you build something that's really cool with your friends um, you know it's like you sure you beat the dragons and get a credit screen and stuff but it's mostly not that not like that let's see if I put that there what happens doesn't care Yeah, so that's why it's a game. The other reason why it's a game is because they're very open to modding. They have uh, an example mod in here already. Two example mods, actually. So one of them is, um, the, da, 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 where is it? Uh, prefabs, no. What was it in? Other? Yes, other. This gray cylinder mod is just a gray cylinder that's already in the game beforehand. Um, that's something that comes comes with the game, but it, they put out um, the code and resources to turn this into a mod. Oh yeah, you can also put text and E to edit and just say hello YouTube. There it is. I wonder if I can see it from the other side. Nope. Oh, what the? Oh, I must have opened both. Oh dear. There we go. <laughs> um, and so then, and so that's a mod that seems very easy. It's using you. You can use whatever kind of three D modeling tools you want, and uh, then also you can. Um, you just use the Unity editor to sort of package this together into a mod, which is very user-friendly and easy and free. Now, also, the other thing is that that scary cat wallpaper uh, is also uh, from a mod. Um, that's a mod that the developers provided as an example of how to do a wallpaper. So, yeah, very, very cool stuff there. I think that the mod seems so open to this kind of a thing. The, uh, the developers, rather, seem so open to this kind of a thing that I wouldn't be surprised if this game, as long as it has a community, will uh, actually live quite long and prosper based on these mods. Yes, good. Based on these mods alone. So, I think that this is a great game. I know that people will probably say this isn't a game at all. This is some sort of simulation thing, which it is. But, um, you know, it's also a game, and it, I think that 
um, I will I would have fun with this and I'm excited to um, I'm excited to to play more of it all right so thanks for watching everybody uh, I really appreciate it was we'll play another indie game next week and I want to give my normal disclaimer at the end that this the uh, all my opinions are possibly influenced by the fact that I was given a key for this game by the developers and so I did not have to pay any money to get it. Alright, thanks for watching, see you, bye bye.